so this here is a DMM that you have used previously in 141 and this is an oscilloscope that we'll be using to take measurements in this lab. So uh, the key difference between these two devices is that uh, this DMM here, it's a, a floating measurement device and this oscilloscope here is a ground reference measurement device. So what do I mean by that? What is a floating point measurement device and a ground reference measurement device? We already uh, know how to use a DMM as portrayed by uh, this virtual DMM here from our DC circuit labs and in 241 we have been using oscilloscope uh, to uh, simulate the circuits and see the waveforms. Key difference between these two devices is that a DMM is known as a floating point measurement device. What do I mean by that? The two props of, of the DMM is not fixed to any specific node. So what do I mean by that? In this circuit where we can see an example uh, series RLC circuit, if I take the DMM, I am not bound to attach uh, this plus probe to any specific node or this minus probe to any specific node. I can attach these two probes to any any nodes and get the voltage from uh, from the display. So if I want to uh, say measure the voltage between uh, this node 1 and the 0 basically the voltage supplied by this uh, uh, this function generator I would just connect the plus to node 1 and minus to node 0 and if I run the simulation and display the DMM screen, I will get a RMS voltage. Um, what happens if I uh, connect this uh, minus probe to 1, uh, minus probe to node 1 and plus probe to ground 0? Basically, I would get the same uh, result. So the reason is the probes are uh, not bound to any specific node. The plus and minus polarity are for reference only. Since we are using AC source here, uh, using the uh, plus on uh, zero node or ground node or m and the minus on node one uh, or vice versa doesn't uh, give us a negative signal because we are getting a RMS value here but if we are using a DC we would get the same magnitude but uh, the polarity would be different so if I take a source DC source if I connect plus to this plus side of the source minus to this minus side of the source and run the simulation uh, I get uh, 12 volt but if I uh, do the reverse I attach minus probe to plus side and plus probe to minus side and run the simulation I'd get the same voltage but uh, with a sign minus so that is signifying the direction of uh, current flow uh, and uh, nothing more so, so basically we are getting current in the opposite direction of what our connection is so the probes of the uh, DMM are not bound to be attached to any fixed uh, node However, when we are using an oscilloscope uh, in real life, when we are using any oscilloscope uh, such as the one displayed in this uh, virtual environment in Multisim, this uh, channels, channel A and cha channel B, uh, these channels have two wires, a plus wire and a minus wire. This oscilloscope is what is known as a ground reference measurement device. That means uh, oscilloscopes always measure with respect to the ground that means when you connect an oscilloscope you are uh, not free to attach anywhere to any node you have to connect this minus wire of each channel this minus wire of channel A and minus wire of channel B to the ground you, you must satisfy uh, this condition otherwise your oscilloscope is not going to make proper um, uh, measurements must connect the negative wire of the oscilloscope to the ground because oscilloscope always measures with respect to the ground 
and you cannot attach this minus wire to any other part of the uh, circuit apart from the ground this is what is meant by a ground reference measurement device the reference uh, reference point must always be to the ground so if we are uh, attaching uh, this oscilloscope by following the norms this uh, minus wire of uh, channel a should be connected to the ground that is node 0 and and this minus wire of node b must also be connected to the ground then we can attach the plus wire to any node we want to uh, get the voltage of so i can attach plus wire of a to either node 1 node 2 or node 3 or uh, plus wire of channel b to node 1 node 2 or node 3 so uh, from oscilloscope we can always get a voltage with respect to the ground that means we will get a nodal voltage when i attach this uh, plus wire of channel a to node 1 uh, this oscilloscope is going to show me a voltage waveform that is uh, between node 1 and the ground when i attach this uh, channel b to say node 2 what this means is i will get a voltage between node 2 and ground so that means from this node 2 to up to this ground so that is the voltage that uh, channel b is going to show difference that we need to understand between floating point measurement device and ground reference measurement device is that i can attach a floating point measurement device at uh, uh, any node of of the circuit uh, either the plus probe or the minus probe i can attach, attach it to any node in the circuit so for example if i want to measure the voltage between node 1 and node 3 i'll just uh, place the dmm this one probe in node 1 and another probe in node 3 and uh, if i run the simulation the screen would show me the uh, rms voltage between these two nodes so the uh, voltage drop between node 1 and node 3 is 2.158 volt but when using an oscilloscope i cannot do this directly if i want to get the voltage drop between node 1 and node 3 what should i do uh, i have to always attach this minus wire of the channels to the ground so if i do that then i am left with the plus wires so i can attach this plus wire to one of the nodes so i will attach it to node 1 then i can attach channel b to node 3 okay. so uh, basically how do we uh, measure uh, this uh, voltage voltage between no, uh, node 1 and node 3 using an oscilloscope since we are getting uh, only one node voltage from one of the channels so channel a would uh, show me the voltage at node 1 channel b would show me uh, the voltage at node 3 in this current uh, connection state so how do i uh, get the values mm -hmm. to get the uh, proper waveforms from the oscilloscope we have to go back to our nodal voltage calculations so, okay, so i have drawn the uh, same circuit that we are uh, simulating uh, here the series rlc circuit and mark the uh, no, uh, nodes uh, as 1, 2, 3 as in this diagram. If we calculate the uh, voltage of the source, resistor, inductor and capacitor in terms of node voltage, what would we get? So uh, if I want to uh, measure the voltage of the source Vs, Vs would be equal to the voltage at node 1 minus the voltage at node 0 so the source is connected between node 1 and node 0 so the voltage of the source is voltage of node 1 minus voltage of node 0 and since uh, voltage at uh, node 0 is 0 so that would mean vs is equals to v1 minus 0 which is equals to v1 so basically since this source is uh, connected between uh, node 1 and the ground node the voltage supplied by the source is the voltage at node 1 similarly if i um, 
want to calculate the voltage of the capacitor VC1 uh, if we want to calculate the vo uh, voltage drop in the capacitor C1 we see that capacitor is connected between node 3 and node 0 so VC1 would equal V of 3 minus V of 0 um, which means V of 3 minus 0 that is P of 3. So since the capacitor is connected uh, between node 3 and node 0 we can find the voltage drop across the capacitor by finding the node voltage 3. Now what about the resistance? Uh, if we look at the resistance uh, we see that uh, the voltage drop in the resistance is uh, V1 minus V2 as the resistance is connected between node 1 and node 2. So VR1 is equals to V1 minus V2 and similarly the voltage drop across the inductor VL1 is equals to V2 minus V3. So when I uh, connect an oscilloscope if we go back to our simulation we see that the uh, minus wires are always connected to the ground that is node 0 so if i attach the plus of uh, uh, plus wire of one uh, channel to one of the nodes uh, say node 1 i will get the voltage in uh, node 1 uh, in channel 1 so if i run the simulation now uh, in the scope i see uh, a waveform this is the channel 1 a uh, channel a waveform and uh, it is showing the voltage in node 1 now um, if i can connect this uh, channel b plus wire to node 2 uh, i'll change this wires color to distinguish in the oscilloscope screen if we look at the oscilloscope screen now we see a red uh, waveform this red waveform is uh, the channel A waveform which is connected to node A so red waveform is the voltage at node 1 and the blue waveform is the voltage at node 2 V2 if we go back to our calculation we see that VR1 is V1 minus V2 so if we are using an oscilloscope we will get two separate node voltages like this and then we will have to perform this subtraction by using features in the oscilloscope uh, the oscilloscope that we have in our lab uh, has a math function which we can use to uh, subtract these two signals and um, every oscilloscope will uh, have a similar feature the older oscilloscopes will not have a math operator uh, instead there is a different uh, approach that can be used to uh, do that subtraction operation but we will we'll not go to that detail in this video basically uh, the difference between a floating point measurement de device as in a DMM and a ground reference measurement device the key difference is how you can utilize the equipment to get your required measurements if you are using a floating measurement device you can connect the probes across any node and, and get the measurement that you need but if you are using a ground reference measurement device like an oscilloscope you have to connect the reference um, pr reference wire to the ground and then attach the uh, plus wire to a node to get the node voltage and if you need to find a voltage drop across any component like R1 or L1 you have to make the subtraction V1 minus V2 or V2 minus V3 but as for this source and this capacitor uh, where uh, they are connected um, between node 1 and 0 and node 3 and 0 uh, for the capacitor since one of their node is the reference node 0 we can just uh, find the node voltage V3 as the 
a voltage drop across the capacitor and voltage drop V1 uh, as the voltage supplied by the uh, uh, function generator. So when using a ground reference measurement device we are limited by how we can attach the probes to make measurements. You might ask why an oscilloscope is a ground reference measurement device an oscilloscope is a, a piece of equipment that can take very large uh, voltages as input. Uh, when dealing with large voltages and large currents, safety is a, a priority concern and the equipment needs protection from uh, accidents due to large voltage or uh, large currents flowing through the device. So to implement this uh, safety mechanism, the oscilloscope is uh, connected to the earthen of the uh, building or earthen of the uh, lab that the equipment is being used in and each of these channels since they are designed to take large voltages as inputs these uh, minus or reference wires are connected directly to the earthen of the uh, electrical system of the lab so uh, if you attach this minus wire to any other node say node 3 or node 2 effectively what it does is the current uh, will start flowing uh, from the function generator uh, through node 1 through node 2 and instead of going through this uh, inductor since this minus wire is connected to the earthen current always takes the least resistive path the current from node 2 will go down this wire to the oscilloscope and into the uh, negative wire and out through the uh, earthen of the uh, electrical system. So the circuit will no longer function as it is designed because uh, there is a uh, grounded node at this node 2 because we have connected the minus wire in this node 2. Therefore we have to always ensure that this minus wire is connected to the ground node of your circuit. In DMM, you can use these probes to get uh, the voltage or difference between any two uh, nodes in in the uh, in the circuit. So basically, a floating measurement device is there is no restriction to connecting uh, these probes. So you can attach uh, these two probes across any equipment and you will get the voltage across, across that component. So if you attach these probes across the resistor, you will get the voltage uh, uh, across that resistor. However, when using an oscilloscope, uh, the key difference is that when using an oscilloscope, you will always have to connect this black wire, this uh, reference wire to the ground and we'll use this uh, other end to connect it to a node to get a node voltage. So basically oscilloscope will uh, give you node voltages and uh, this black wire should always be connected to the ground. This is the uh, oscilloscope that we have available in our labs. This is BQ, BK Precision 2190D. So this is a digital storage oscilloscope, DSO. So there are two kinds of oscilloscope, uh, as CRO, cathode oscilloscope, and this is a, here is a digital storage oscilloscope. So uh, here uh, all the signals will be processed in the DSP processors inside. So we'll be able to uh, do many manipulations of the signal that we're taking reading of. Uh, we'll get to that later. But uh, let's get to the uh, basic features of this oscilloscope. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are two channels. Right here is channel 1, which can be uh, seen if you uh, look closely. It's labeled uh, channel 1. And this here is channel 2. And as you can see, the uh, uh, channel 1 probe is marked with a yellow label and channel 2 probe is marked with a blue label. This signifies that the signal connected to channel 1 will appear in the screen as a yellow, yellow signal and the signal connected to channel 2 will appear as a blue signal uh, in the screen. 
Okay, so this is uh, there is a color distinction for ease of usage. Each of these channel is connected to a high attenuation probe. Uh, as you can see, the probe looks like this. So for two channels, you get two probes like this. So these are high attenuation probes. And um, what is an attenuation probe? Uh, I'll get to that a bit later. So basically, uh, uh, this probe has two parts this black wire here and this other end here so you will always connect this black wire to your circuits ground and you will connect this end to the node that you want to get the voltage of okay so how do you uh, connect uh, this uh, probe to your wires I'll get to that first uh, let's talk about attenuation so this, this probe it allows the attenuation or uh, reduction of a, of a signal uh, up to 10 times so as you can see there is a red switch on the probe one end is marked 1x and other end is marked 10x when the switch is placed to 10x uh, position the signal that is uh, connected to the probe will be reduced 10 times and uh, the reduced signal will be shown on the oscilloscope. That means if you connect a 10 volt peak to peak signal in this condition, you will uh, see a 1 volt peak to peak signal on the screen. So it is essential for this lab that you ensure that <coughs> this probe is switched to uh, 1x mode, no attenuation mode. So before connecting your probe, you should always check if this switch is placed to the 1x end. Okay. Now, how do you connect uh, wire uh, to this probe? So, to connect a wire, you have to press this part down and attach a wire in this exposed region and release the lock. And once this wire is locked, you can place the other end of the wire uh, to the breadboard to get your uh, node voltages. Okay, so <coughs> that's that. And this uh, clip you have already used crocodile clips in your previous labs while connecting uh, DC sources. So connecting wire in this clip is uh, simple. You just open the clip and place a wire. So one uh, note of caution, do not wrap the wire around the clip or around the probe. That will uh, damage the wire in the long run and it may cause a faulty reading. So do not wrap your wire around. Just place the wire and lock it in place and then connect the other end to your circuit. Turn on the oscilloscope you should press the power button which is located on top of the oscilloscope. If you uh, look closely, here is a power button on top of the oscilloscope and you should press it to turn on the oscilloscope. Once you press the button, you will see that the uh, buttons light up and the uh, display shows a welcome screen and the screen lights up. So. Uh, this is the oscilloscope in a un unconnected condition so i haven't connected the channels to any any circuit or any signal so uh, uh, no connection is displayed once the signal is connected uh, the screen will show the signal and you will have to adjust the display according to your need so that you can see the signal properly and uh, you can get all the relevant information properly. So before uh, going into adjustment, we need to know how the respective buttons work. And uh, let's zoom in a bit and see uh, what each button do. As you can see, all the uh, buttons here. This channel one uh, has some buttons corresponding to channel 1 over here. This channel 2 has some buttons corresponding to channel 2 over here. 
you will see that this part is marked vertical. Okay. It's marked vertical and it's encircled in a uh, red uh, border. So this uh, vertical controls control the display vertically. That means the y axis. Okay. So voltage per division that we saw in uh, multi -sim simulations is controlled by these knobs. So this is the knob corresponding to channel 1. This is the knob corresponding to channel 2. You will see that the knobs are labeled for uh, this knob it's labeled in yellow and this knob is labeled in blue. So this yellow color signifies that it's connected to channel 1 which is marked in yellow. This blue color signifies that this is uh, uh, connected to channel 2. This corresponds to channel 2. Same goes for this position button which is encircled in a yellow color and this position button which is encircled in a blue color. This channel 1 button when lit up means that channel 1 is on. So you can press this to turn on and off the channels. So if you turn off the channel no signal will be displayed. Okay, You cannot see any signal because both channel 1 and channel 2 is off. When you turn on channel 1, you will see that uh, the signal connected to channel 1 is shown on the screen. If you connect any signal to channel 2, when you uh, turn on channel 2, you will see that signal. And as you can see, no signal is connected to channel 2. So, uh, blue, uh, a blue signal at 0 volt, that is no, uh, no, no volt, is uh, shown on the display. Okay, so uh, for now let's work with uh, channel 1 only as channel 2 is unused. Okay, uh, this uh, oscilloscope here is a single trigger oscilloscope and uh, the time base, the time division is uh, common for both the channels. So you cannot set the time division individually for channel 1 and channel 2, you can set only one time division uh, for the oscilloscope because this is a single trigger oscilloscope. So the uh, x-axis that is the horizontal scaling is controlled by this horizontal panel. As you can see this part is marked horizontal and this horizontal uh, uh, knob, this, this knob, this controls the time per division uh, uh, settings and this knob controls the position. There are other buttons that are used in the oscilloscope. This here is a measure button which can be used to uh, measure different parameters of the signal. This here is the cursor button which we can use to activate the cur cursors and get readings from specific locations of the signal. We have used cursor in multi-sim simulation pre previously and this measure uh, is uh, similar to the voltage, voltage probes that we have used previously. Um, one important thing that I should mention is a oscilloscope can only measure voltage. An oscilloscope is a voltage measurement device it is not designed for measuring currents. Currents uh, can be measured uh, if you uh, attach special attachments to the oscilloscope like current probe but by default an oscilloscope is not prepared for uh, current measurement. So uh, uh, here you can see uh, two other buttons in between uh, the channel 1 and channel 2 controls. One is the map function and one is the reference function. So uh, we'll be uh, needing the, both of these functions for experiments that we're doing in uh, uh, Tripoli241L. So uh, math function allows us to uh, perform mathematical operations on the signals and this reference function allows us to store uh, signals so that we can compare that signal to the currently uh, attached signals and uh, make necessary uh, readings and, and uh, calculations.
so we'll be using this reference as well so uh, why do we need a re reference because we we are limited by two channels and we are also limited by the fact that the probe can only be uh, uh, attached to a node one single node at a time so basically this oscilloscope can uh, calculate two uh, node node may, uh, node voltages at a time so if we need multiple readings uh, that requires values from uh, more than two nodes we'll have to store the extra readings uh, in the first set of readings and store them in the reference and then move on to the second set of readings well, the this thing will become clear when we perform experiments using the reference but just for your information this reference here stores signals for future reference and calculation Uh, let's look at some terminologies that we'll be using to explain the different parameters of a sinusoidal signal. So a peak-to-peak -peak voltage is the difference between the highest peak and the lowest peak. This is often uh, represented by VP-P or VPP. So VPP is the peak-to-peak -peak voltage, which is the difference between the uh, maximum uh, peak and the uh, minimum peak. Uh, the amplitude is also known as the peak voltage. VP uh, in our oscilloscope. Uh, VP will be referred to as Vmax. Vmax. So, in our oscilloscope, VP would be referred to as Vmax. Just as the difference from 0 to the highest peak is Vmax, similarly, from 0 to the minimum peak is known as Vmin. This is known as Vmin. So Vmax and Vmin are two properties that can be measured in our oscilloscope directly. So when we say uh, voltage peak to peak, we mean that the difference between the high positive peak and the negative peak. When we say voltage peak or voltage max, we are talking about the difference from zero to the highest peak, basically the amplitude and when we say vmin this is the difference from zero to the minimum peak what do we mean when we say poles per division and time per division um, these are uh, some parameters the oscilloscope uh, uses to plot the waveform into the screen uh, we are familiar with the uh, graphing in graph paper and we will use that knowledge to understand what these terms mean so first let's consider volts per division um, initially we will we'll not consider the frequency of the wave let's just consider the amplitude of the wave so suppose uh, I want to draw a sinusoid with peak peak to peak voltage of two volts. Uh, so now um, let's assume that our oscilloscope is set at two volts per division so what does this mean two volts per division uh, uh, since the voltage is marked in the vertical axis that is the y axis this two volt per division uh, refers to the uh, y axis what does it refer to well uh, just as you can see there are grid boxes here you will see in the oscilloscope that there are uh, on the screen you will find grid boxes uh, in your oscilloscope so when the oscilloscope is set at 2 volts per division this means that each grid box is of 2 volts 
so if this is 0 volt this first grid would be 2 volt and from this uh, this marking of the grid to this marking of the grid it's another 2 volt and totaling 4 volt and so on and so forth So, when our oscilloscope is set at 2 volts per division, these, uh, each of this grid is uh, 2 volts. So, if uh, this is 0, this first grid would be 2 volt, the next 4, the next 6, and the next 8, and so on and so forth. What if we change the volt per division to 1 volt per division? So, when the oscilloscope is set at 1 volt per division, this in each of these grid box will be then set to 1 volt so if this is 0 then now this grid is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 and similarly uh, minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and minus 4 suppose uh, we want to draw this uh, 2 volt peak to peak sinusoid with this uh, 1 volt per division setting then uh, the graph would be something like this please note that we are uh, not considering frequency at this point so why this graph looks like this so a sinusoid uh, with the two volt peak to peak means that from the maximum peak to the minimum peak the difference is two volt so from zero uh, our highest peak is one volt and from uh, 0 our lowest peak is minus 1 volt making it 2 volt peak to peak so from this to this end it's 2 volt peak to peak and that is our uh, wave so our wave is of 2 volt peak to peak so let's change the volt per division to 0 0.5 volts per division so that would mean now in the oscilloscope screen each grid box is 0 0.5 volt So now if we draw the sinusoid of uh, 2 volt peak to peak, the graph would look something like this. So now you see that at, one, uh, at 0 0.5 volt per division, the graph is looking like this. So when the volts per division is 0 0.5, the graph looks something like this. And now see the maximum uh, peak is 1 volt and it consists of two grids because each grid is 0 0.5 volt uh, in the uh, positive peak and also the same in the negative peak. Now let's uh, draw uh, two, uh, the same curve in two different settings so uh, for the black curve it's um, 0 0.5 volts per division and now we'll draw the same curve but with a different uh, volts per division setting so let's use 1 volts per division so 1 volts per division would mean each block is 1 volt so 1 2 3 4 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 so uh, we'll represent 1 volt per division with this uh, blue ink and the black ink represents 0 volt, 0 0.5 volts per division so now if we draw the same uh, same sinusoid with 2 volts peak to peak it would now look something like this 
so it's the same curve but their uh, heights appear different because we have drawn the same curve but with different Vosper division in the black uh, plot the Vosper division is 0 0.5 so we will need two grids to reach one volt on the top and two grids in the bottom to uh, reach minus one volt and when the setting is one volts per division we need just one uh, grid block for one volt so the graph appears smaller because the scale is smaller so this is the uh, exact same thing that happens uh, when we are using a oscilloscope so if we consider another example let's suppose that channel 1 is set at 0 0.5 volts per division and and we have a sine wave of 2 volts peak attached and channel 2 the volts per division is 2 volts per division and a sine wave of um, 2 volts peak so I have attached the same uh, sine wave of 2 volts peak uh, to the two different channels but but the two different channels has two different volts per division settings so for channel 2 the volts per division is 2 so each grid block is 2 4 6 8 minus 2 for the uh, channel uh, channel 1 for channel 1 the volts per division is 0 0.5 so each block is 0 0.5 volt 0 0.5 1 1.5 2 0 0.5 1 so if we if we now draw the graphs the channel 1 curve would look something like this since the volts per division is 0 0.5 and our signal is of 2 volt peak that means the positive peak will be um, maximum of 2 volt and the negative peak would be the same uh, maximum of uh, minus 2 volt so uh, accordingly, uh, according to the scale of the uh, blue settings of 0 0.5 volts per division, we have drawn this curve. Now, uh, if we draw the signal of channel 2 uh, with 2 volts per division, the signal will now be like this. So, uh, here uh, the same sine wave of 2 volt peak appears smaller because in this channel the volts per division is 2 so each block is 2 volts so the maximum voltage of 2 volt is represented by one grid and the minimum of minus 2 volt is represented by uh, another grid so, so these two plots they have the same magnitude of 2 volts peak but they appear to be different in magnitude because of the different time volt settings so it is crucial that we are comparing uh, two graphs represented by two different channels with the same volts per division otherwise we will uh, face an illusion so although these two curves the blue curve and the black curve are same in magnitude of two volts peak they appear different the black curve appears smaller compared to the blue curve because of the volts per division settings so when we compare magnitude graphically we must always set the volts per division uh, for both channels to be the same
otherwise we cannot uh, compare graphically so if we now change the volts per division of channel 2 to 0 0.5 so if we change the volts per division of channel 2 to 0 0.5 and uh, draw the same sine wave of 2 volt peak now uh, this curve will be the same as the blue curve because we have attached the same signal now since the volts per division for both channel 1 and channel 2 are same of 0.5 volts we can graphically compare the plots and say that they are equal in magnitude so this is crucial to distinguish between the volts per division settings of the two different channels now let's uh, talk about uh, time per division so volts per division settings uh, were settings for the vertical axis and it said how much each of the uh, grid block represented for uh, time per division uh, as you have already uh, guessed it is it is with respect to the horizontal axis the time axis and uh, as as like as the volts per division time per division uh, sets how what each of this uh, grid block is uh, representing so a time time per division of 0 0.5 seconds would mean that each block is of 0 0.5 seconds and so on and so forth so with this setting let's draw a sinusoid of 1 hertz so let's consider a sinusoid of 1 hertz uh, 1 hertz means that there, there will be one si full cycle per second so let's plot the curve here uh, please note that we are ignoring the amplitude we are just uh, considering the frequency for now so a 1 hertz sinusoid would look like this with 0 0.5 seconds per dv appears in one second so that's what uh, this means now if we change the time per division to one second this means the screen would display one second in each block so the same sinusoid of one hertz would now be uh, represented like this one cycle in one second let's change the time time per division uh, settings again and set it to 0 0.25 so 0 0.25 seconds at 0 0.25 uh, second time per division each of this grid block would be 0 0.25 seconds and so on and so forth now if we draw the same sinusoid of 1 hertz the signal would appear something like this so um, the time uh, time per division is defining how, how much each grid block is representing how much of time each grid block is representing uh, for comparison, uh, let's uh, draw two uh, time volt per division uh, settings uh, in this uh, same graph. So let's represent a second time per division setting 
of 0 0.5 uh, 0.5 second with blue ink so now e uh, for this uh, setting the uh, grids will be 0 0.5 1 1.5 2 2.5 3 3.5 and so on and so forth and if we draw the same sinusoid in this this setting it would now look like this so uh, so now if we draw the same sinusoid of 1 hertz it would look like this so the sinusoid the same sinusoid due to different uh, time per uh, division <clears throat> as you can see uh, the same sinusoidal signal uh, due to different time per division uh, settings appears to be uh, smaller but the both of these plots represent the same sinusoid of 1 hertz but due to the time per division setting they look uh, larger and smaller compared to each other but th this is not true because these these are just drawn at a different scale so when we uh, change the uh, time per division settings we are actually zooming in and zooming out on the x-axis that is the time axis so by altering the time per division we would be uh, altering the uh, zoom in or uh, zoom out effect on the time scale and we can adjust the plot to a optimum uh, viewing uh, setting similarly changing the voles per division changes the zoom in, zoom in and zoom out effect on the vertical axis and uh, what it does is we ha we zoom in and zoom out uh, on the vertical axis to make the waveform appear clearer for our uh, understanding uh, one important uh, aspect to note is that uh, our oscilloscope uh, that we have access to our lab has only one uh, time per division so both the channels channel 1 and channel 2 will have the same time per division setting you cannot have separate time per division setting for separate channels one time per division setting for both the channels but both per division settings uh, can be different for uh, for the different channels let's say we have channel 1 at 1 volts per division and channel 2 at 2 volts per division and let's consider a sinusoid with 2 volts peak so uh, so if we draw the uh, channel 1 at 1 volts per division the each of the grid would be 1 volt and if we now plot the 2 volt uh, sinusoid uh, note that we are not uh, accurately considering the frequency here we are just considering the uh, peak voltage so if we uh, draw the channel 1 wave in this setting now we will have a waveform like this so 2 volts peak so each of the uh, peak is 2 volt one at positive one at negative and since uh, we have one volts per division to co uh, cover uh, two volts uh, the peak must be of uh, two grid lengths uh, same goes for the negative peak now if we draw the uh, channel 2 curve with two volts per division setting uh, so each grid will be now two folds
and if we import the signal now it will appear like this so uh, we have the same sinusoid but with two different uh, voltage settings and as you can see that we have a, a zoom in and zoom out effect on the vertical axis when we change the uh, volts per division so at one volts per division we are essentially zooming in making the signal uh, cover a greater area of the screen and at two volts per division we are making the signal appear smaller at uh, and covering a, a lesser area of the screen um, uh, with respect to the vertical axis and as we saw earlier time per division we are uh, uh, scaling in on the horizontal axis the time axis so if we increase the time per uh, division we're we're essentially squeezing the signal to show many cycles in the screen and if we are decreasing the volts per division we are uh, essentially stretching out the plots and showing less number of cycles but uh, with more details for each cycle. This is how time per division and volts per division setting affect how we see a wave in the oscilloscope screen. To get proper uh, displayed uh, signals, we have to adjust the display uh, by controlling the vertical uh, volts per division and horizontal time per division. If we rotate this horizontal knob, the time scaling will uh, change and your uh, signal will appear better but you will have to adjust it according to your needs. There is no set rules to what value this uh, horizontal uh, time per division should be or this vertical volts per division should be. So if you uh, notice there is a, a value written here 50 microsecond so this is the 50 microsecond per division that is the time division so each block each of these uh, grid blocks uh, horizontally is 50 microseconds so when you change the horizontal knob this value changes so if you rotate it um, counterclockwise the value increases if you rotate it clockwise the value decreases so uh, you can adjust this uh, horizontal uh, time per division according to your needs. So um, 50 microsecond is uh, good enough for displaying this signal. As for voltage per division, uh, you can set two different uh, uh, volts per division for each of the channel. So the volts per division corresponding to channel 1 is displayed in yellow and when you turn on channel 2 the uh, volts per division for channel 2 will be displayed in blue. When channel 2 is off this will not be displayed. Only channel 1 will be displayed or the active channel will be displayed. So uh, channel 1 is 1 volt per division which means each block in uh, a vertical uh, grid is one volt so one block corresponds to one volt so we can count the grids to measure the voltages uh, this uh, th uh, this calculation is with respect to cro which was the older oscilloscope uh, used before this digital oscilloscope came came in and uh, there the calculations had to be done manually but since we're using a digital storage oscilloscope we have a feature to set uh, to uh, measure the values that we need so one volt per division is good enough for this signal if we want to uh, zoom out a little bit so we have to change the vertical uh, volts per division for channel one since this signal is connected to channel one so if we rotate it counterclockwise this volt per division will increase and therefore the uh, uh, signal will be uh, will have a kind of a zoom out effect so 2 volt per division is good good enough for this signal 
now let us connect uh, another signal in channel 2 and turn channel 2 on so another signal has been connected to channel 2 and we can uh, turn on channel 2 to uh, see the signal so uh, one very important aspect of uh, this uh, display is that although the uh, yellow signal which is signal from channel 1 appears uh, smaller than the signal in channel 2 the blue signal you have to look at the scalings of the signal to get an accurate uh, idea about the relative sizes of the signal so channel 1 is currently in 2 volts per division channel 2 is in 1 volts per division so without making these uh, time divisions equal we cannot say which signal is uh, larger or smaller compared to the other so to get a, a good comparison we have to either make channel 2 1 or channel 1 1 volt per division or channel 2 2 volt per division so let me uh, make channel 2 2 volt per division so if we if i do that you can see that this uh, the signals are overlapping and uh, this means that uh, they are equal in magnitude um, note that uh, by using the oscilloscope by changing this position norm of the corresponding signal we can move the signals up and down so this blue uh, blue one referring to channel 2 would move the blue signal this yellow now corresponding to channel 1 would move the yellow signal so uh, we can move the signal to the appropriate locations to reset the position you can press the button it would uh, take the signal to the axis okay so if you have moved uh, any of your signal just uh, what you should do is press the position button a very uh, critical uh, part of using an oscilloscope is to take measurements and to make the measurements we have to use the measure button which is located here uh, in this uh, corner this measure button so once you press the measure button it will light up and it will show a panel in the screen which shows uh, dif uh, all the different readings that are di being displayed by default so these are not the only readings that that can be uh, taken using the measure feature of the oscilloscope you can change uh, whatever readings uh, you, you want according to your need and according to the experiment to change the parameter being measured you have to uh, adjust the measure uh, feature using buttons placed right here so this button works just like an atm booth so each of these button is connected to a specific option in the screen so this button corresponds to this block this button corresponds to this block this one corresponds to this block and so on so currently channel 1 is showing uh, vpp that is voltage peak to peak 7.68 volt if you press this button uh, and want to change the reading uh, that is being displayed you you will get all the different uh, options you can select a voltage parameter a time parameter or a delay, a delay parameter so let's choose a voltage parameter once you choose voltage it will uh, you allow you to choose the source which is either channel 1 or channel 2 so if you press the button corresponding to the source you can change the channel so um, currently uh, showing channel uh, 2 since i press the button if i press it again it will show channel 1 the type of uh, uh, voltage being the, uh, shown in the rating is voltage peak to peak if you press this button it will allow you to uh, set all the different uh, uh, voltage parameters like v max v mean 
VM and you can uh, uh, select the required parameter by pressing the button repetitively corresponding to the type or you can use the rotator here if you use the rotator you can rotate to select the options that is being displayed in the menu so uh, if you uh, rotate it you uh, you can access all the different parameters so uh, let's choose vmax so vmax is uh, uh, equivalent to uh, v peak peak voltage peak voltage and vmax uh, can be equivalent in this case for taking the readings we have to ensure that both of our channels are uh, set to uh, coupling of ac okay so if i press channel 1 button it will show the coupling coupling is uh, currently dc since we are uh, taking ac ac measurements and uh, our source is ac and our output is ac so our coupling should be ac if we press the channel button we can access the channel menu and from there we can choose the coupling by pressing the corresponding button and selecting AC. You can uh, close this menu by pressing this button menu on off. So channel 1 coupling is now AC. Similarly for channel 2 press channel 2 and for coupling change it to AC. And close this menu. So uh, both of uh, our channels are coupled to AC. Now we are, we are ready to uh, make measurements and take readings. So if I press the measure button, it will show the channel 1 Vmax as we had selected previously. So uh, you can uh, take this reading as voltage peak. Um, as I told you earlier that the amplitude of the function generator has to be set using the oscilloscope. So if your uh, circuit diagram says 3 volt peak, you have to attach your oscilloscope to the to um, set the amplitude of your uh, function generator. You have to connect the function generator to your oscilloscope, uh, set all the uh, parameters accordingly and then uh, look at this uh, reading if channel 1 is connected to the voltage source and I want to set it to 3 volt peak I would have to uh, look at this this measurement and adjust the amplitude of the function generator until I get to the desired value so, um, so if I adjust the amplitude of the function generator you will see that the signal is decreasing in size and also the reading is changing. So currently uh, the reading is 2.96 volt max. Currently it's 3.04 volt max which is 3 volt peak and um, and that is the point where I want it to be. So once I set the uh, amplitude of the function generator, you don't uh, have to adjust the amplitude anymore. So once you set the uh, amplitude uh, according to your circuit diagram, you will not have to adjust the amplitude anymore. For further readings, you have to just uh, connect to the appropriate node and take the proper readings. Now let's uh, look at this case where uh, these signals uh, displayed in the screen are not stable and they are running. So this situation is called untriggered uh, signal and when the signals are untriggered they will be running and you cannot uh, take proper measurements or even see the signal properly. To get out of this condition you have to uh, manipulate the trigger settings of the oscilloscope and the trigger setting of the oscilloscope can be found in the trigger 
trigger region located here. So this part of the settings is marked trigger and we will use these buttons to control the trigger trigger set. When I press the trigger menu button, you will see that uh, you will get a couple of uh, settings. The type is edge. Uh, there are different types of uh, triggers, edge, pulse, video, slope, alternative, but we will always by default use edge triggering and the source is channel 2. So uh, the triggering mechanism is working with respect to uh, channel 2. If I change the channel source to channel 1, you can see that the signal has been triggered and my readings has stabilized. Okay, So uh, this might not always be the case. Uh, there may be situations where by changing the channels you cannot make the signal trigger in that case you have to set the uh, use this function called set to 50 percent in a separate situation even if even after changing the uh, source from channel 2 to channel 1 the signal is untriggered you can utilize another feature uh, that is shown here that is called set to 50 percent if you press the set to 50 percent button the triggering value will be reduced to 50 percent and you can see that uh, using this feature our signal has been stabilized um, if none of this uh, method uh, changing the source of trigger or set to 50 percent work you can always uh, set the uh, trigger level manually by using this knob. Um, as I told earlier, uh, using the math, math feature, we can uh, do arithmetic operations on the signals. So if I press the math button, you will get um, an option to choose the operation and the two sources channel 1 and channel 2. You can choose the sources to be the same or different. So the most important uh, math feature uh, that we can access is the subtraction feature because as I said um, we will be uh, taking measurements of node voltages using the oscilloscope and uh, we already know that the node the voltage of component is the difference between the node voltages at, on either ends of the component so using the um, uh, subtraction operation we can choose source a to be channel 1 which is connected to one one end of a component and source b to be channel 2 which is connected to another end of the component and the subtraction the resulting signal would would show the the voltage across the component. So in this case it would be the uh, purple signal that is shown in the display. Apart from subtraction we can also multiply the signal, divide the signal or uh, perform a fast period transformation of the signal but uh, uh, the most important uh, feature that we will be using is the subtraction feature. Let's talk about using cursors. We already know that the peak voltage or Vmax of a wave is the distance from zero to the highest peak or the uh, amplitude. And that is what we uh, know as Vp, peak voltage or Vmax. Uh, peak to peak voltage on the other hand is the distance between the highest peak and the lowest peak and that is marked here that is what we call VPP and V minimum is the difference from 0 to the lowest peak this is what is known as V minimum uh, when using an os oscilloscope we will be using cursors to uh, measure these values so how do we uh, go about using cursors so first of all um, let's consider a sine wave uh, as shown here when using cursors, we will be given two cursors, uh, cursors A 
and cursor B. And we can mani manipulate both of these cursors uh, any way that we want. And both of these cursors can be either set to measure voltage or time. So first uh, let's consider uh, using cursors for measuring voltage. So when measuring measuring voltage uh, we'll be looking at the vertical axis. So the cursors will appear something like this. So you'll be able to manipulate the cursors by rotating the appropriate knob. So when you rotate the knob the cursors will move uh, up and down the screen and you can place them wherever you want. So if you want to measure uh, the peak voltage or Vmax of this curve, you should uh, move one of the cursors to zero and move another cursor to the peak. So uh, we are doing this because we know from our previous discussion that the peak voltage is the difference between zero and the uh, peak voltage. So uh, in this position uh, cursor A and cursor B will uh, give us certain values. So since this cursor, let's call it cursor B, is at 0 volts, so the value will be 0 volts. And this cursor A is at 3 volt, as you can see from the uh, from the axis, so the value of A would be 3 volt. So, so the peak voltage would be uh, value of cursor A minus value of cursor B. So I'm putting this uh, absolute value here because uh, no matter where you uh, uh, place the cursor A or cursor B, you will always get, get this result. So using this relation, we would get 3 minus 0 equals to 3 volt. So the peak voltage is 3 volt in this case. Uh, using the same method, if we place cursor B uh, at the peak here and cursor A at uh, 0 volt here, using the same formula, the peak voltage would be absolute value of A minus B. So now the cursor value at A is 0 uh, minus B uh, at B is 3 volt, so absolute value of minus 3 which is 3 volt. So it doesn't matter where you place the cursor. Uh, the important thing is the difference between the two cursors. So to get voltage peak, we place one cursor at 0 volt and another cursor at the peak. Similarly, to get B peak to peak, uh, the peak to peak voltage, we would place one cursor at the uh, positive peak and another cursor at the negative p just as shown here or to get a uh, uh, get the uh, v minimum we would place one cursor at the negative peak and place another cursor at zero so one cursor is at zero another is at negative peak this would give us the v minimum Uh, now let us consider the cursors for measuring time. Cursor A and B and measurement type is time. So when we are uh, measuring time, we are uh, considering taking readings on the x-axis, uh, that is the time axis. The cursors will now appear vertical like this, which, is, uh, which will enable us to take time measurements at specific points and the difference between them. So uh, this measurement is very important for uh, measuring phase differences and we will be utilizing this feature to measure phase differences between two, uh, two signals. Uh, in our case, uh, a source voltage and a output voltage across the component. So uh, in this example, uh, change the uh, cursor's position, it will uh, go back and forth uh, like this 
uh, you can do the same for the two cursors and uh, when you uh, manipulate the position of the cursor it will go back and forth uh, the x x axis and you can take them to suitable locations to take uh, uh, phase uh, phase readings what we need to do is we need to place the cursor at peak of uh, one of the uh, curves so for example if we are uh, trying to take re measurements of uh, of phase for this uh, green signal with respect to the red signal we should place one cursor at the peak of the red signal and another cursor at the peak of the green signal and we can do that by manipulating the appropriate buttons in the uh, oscilloscope here we are just placing these vertical lines uh, on the graph uh, the cursor would work similarly so here let's say this is cursor a and its value is approximately 25 microsecond and this is b cursor b its value is approximately 50 microseconds so uh, when uh, measuring the uh, time difference similarly like when uh, taking differences of voltages uh, for time dlt would be the absolute value of, of a minus b so in our case the value is 25 minus 50 is equals to minus 25 that is 25 microseconds so uh, this is the difference uh, between the uh, two two peaks and from this we can measure the phase del t into frequency into 360 degree so uh, this is how we get the phase from this time difference calculation an important parameter of phase is the uh, phase uh, sign so phase is either uh, leading or lagging uh, represented by uh, plus sign or minus sign respectively now how do we determine what symbol the phase angle would be for this situation so as I said earlier we are measuring the phase of the green signal with respect to the red signal so just uh, graphically if you uh, look at the curves you see that starting from zero the peak of the uh, red signal appears first and then then the peak of the green signal appears this means that uh, in time the green peak appears later uh, compared to the peak of the red so we can say that the green signal is lagging the red signal because its peak appears after uh, in time compared to the uh, red peak so in this case the uh, since the green signal is lagging its phase would be minus so um, that's uh, that's one way to determine the phase so here it would be uh, the phase symbol would be minus phase would be minus theta and the theta can be calculated from this uh, delta t into f into 360 um, so uh, from the oscilloscope uh, we determine the time difference by placing the two cursors at time measurement setting at two peaks and uh, find the del t. This del t would be displayed on the oscilloscope graph as you will see uh, later. Um, and uh, the phase symbol would be uh, minus or plus depending on uh, where uh, the peak is compared to the reference signal so uh, here we see that the time difference is 25 microsecond and the uh, uh, symbol is minus because the green signal is lagging and uh, therefore the phase would be minus theta in this case the phase is uh, 90 degree so for the del t we got 25 microsecond the frequency is 10 kilohertz for this example and 360 degree the angle is 90 degree 
and since the signal is lagging it's minus 90 degree so the green signals angle is uh, phase angle is minus 90 degree uh, let's look at another example so in this example uh, if you notice that uh, we have a different green signal the red signal is as previous so uh, here uh, as as previous we are measuring the phase of the green signal with respect to the red signal so if you uh, look graphically you see that the peak of the red signal appears later than the peak of the green signal which means this uh, green signal is leading so the green signal is leading we may determine the phase of this green signal by placing the uh, cursors in the peaks of the signal and then we'll find the time time delay from which we can find the uh, phase angle so here uh, let's take this cursor at the peak of the green signal and this, cur uh, this cursor at the peak of uh, the red signal so let's uh, assume that this is cursor A and its value is approximately 5 microsecond this is B with a value of approximately uh, 25 microseconds so here uh, if you uh, if you see that the del t as previous is absolute value of a minus b so absolute value of 5 minus 25 is equals to 20 microseconds and the theta is um, 20 into 10 to the power minus 6 frequency is still uh, 10 kilohertz and 360 degree so this will be around 72 degrees and as I said earlier the phase symbol would be uh, plus leading because the green signal peak appears before the peak of the red signal so we will put plus now um, another way to determine the symbol of the phase is by uh, subtracting always subtracting the time of the peak of the reference signal in this case the red signal uh, uh, and and the so we can determine the symbol of the phase by subtracting the time of the reference signal and the time of the peak signal always uh, will be put the time of the reference signal and uh, subtract the peak of the um, other signal uh, from that so del t2 say time of peak of reference minus time of peak of our target signal so if we use this relation we see that the time of peak of, of the reference and that is the uh, red signal is 25 microsecond and we subtract the time of peak of the target signal that is the green signal from it that is 5 microsecond so here we see that the difference is plus 20 microsecond so this uh, this symbol plus would be the uh, symbol of the phase angle if we use the same analogy in our previous example uh, this one we would place the peak at the reference and another peak at the target signal if we use the same uh, if we use the same formula uh, time of the uh, time of the reference is 25 microsecond and time of the target is 50 microsecond the difference is minus 25 microsecond so this symbol minus is the symbol of the phase angle as we so earlier
So this is another way which we can uh, use to determine the symbol of the phase angle. Uh, another way to take uh, readings is by using the uh, cursors. So to activate the cursor, we have to press the cursor button here. And you can see that the mode is currently off. You can uh, turn it to on by uh, pressing the corresponding button of the block. So when you uh, press it, you will see different options manual track and auto we will be using manual so um, you uh, get different uh, options for uh, using the cursor for uh, example there is type it will uh, let you choose whether you want to take voltage readings or if you press it you'll get the option to take uh, time readings and uh, in this source, uh, this is selected as channel 1. You can change the source according to your need by pressing the corresponding button. If you press the button, it will be uh, changed to channel 2. And you can see that uh, referring to the channel, the color of the cursor will change. As I told you earlier, channel 1 is marked as yellow, channel 2 is marked as blue. So uh, when you change the channel, the cursor will change color accordingly to uh, let you identify which channel you are referring to. And when you have math and uh, references on, you can also select sources to be those math or reference signals. You will get uh, two cursors, cursor A and cursor B. Currently cursor A is selected as you can see by this white mark in uh, around cursor A. To choose cursor B, you have to choose the press the corresponding button and when it's marked it will be highlighted in white. To change the cursor, you have to rotate this knob. Currently the uh, second cursor is out of the screen. So if you uh, rotate the uh, if you rotate the knob counterclockwise, the cursor will appear on the screen. So you get two uh, two cursors, cursor A and cursor B, to make the measurements. Since we are uh, taking uh, time readings, which is uh, marked by this type time, we can see that cursor A is placed in minus 750 microsecond, and cursor B is placed in 20 microseconds. So this plus and minus uh, symbology is referring to this uh, uh, axis here, but in reality it's is just a reference as we know that time is not negative um, del t this um, if i uh, show you the screen you can see that the readings of the cursor are shown in the screen so uh, if you look, look closely cursor a is marked minus 750 microseconds cursor b is marked 270 microseconds and this del t is showing the difference between the two cursors that is 1.2 milliseconds. Similarly, if you uh, change the type to voltage, there will be two cursors, one on the top, one on the bottom. And uh, if we change the source to channel 1, the reading will be in correspondence to channel 1, that is the yellow signal. So if I rotate the knob now, since cursor B is selected, the cursor B will move. And if I place it in the bottom pick, and then if I change to cursor A, and if I move it to the top pick, you can see that cursor A is at 3.04 volt, cursor B is at minus 2.96 volt and delta V is 6 volt. So uh, we can say that the peak voltage of the signal is 3.04 volt and peak to peak voltage is 6 volt which is the difference between the max and minimum volt. We, we can also move cursor B to 0 volts and then delta V will be 3.04 volt which is the peak voltage. So peak voltage is the uh, amplitude of the signal from uh, 0 volt to the maximum uh, peak of the voltage so which is being measured by the cursor in this position.
lastly um, in reference uh, we can uh, press this button reference and we can uh, see that there are two references reference a if you press the button you can uh, see another value reference b so uh, there are some preset values that are uh, that are saved but if you want to save something in reference a say uh, for example if i want to save the yellow signal that is channel one signal in reference a i should uh, choose source to be channel one reference a to be my storage location and press save and uh, see that the uh, gray gray signal that is overlapping channel one has been saved so if i turn off reference is on if i turn it off you can see that uh, my channel one signal uh, is uh, similar to reference a signal because it is a copy of the uh, channel one signal that is saved in reference a if i press reference a to be on you can see that it's overlapping channel a similarly if i want to uh, store uh, channel 2 signal in reference b i can choose reference b change the source to uh, channel 2 and then press save and uh, re reference b is off if i press on you'll see that another gray signal is being displayed on top of channel 2 because uh, the channel 2 signal has been copied in reference B. Now, uh, what is the use of reference A and B? So, uh, if I uh, remove the signals, channel 1 and channel 2 signals, if I remove them, now you can see that there is no, uh, no signal being displayed in the screen. So, because channel 1 and channel 2 has been removed. If I press reference B to be on and change to reference A and set it to on, you'll see that uh, the saved copies of uh, channel 1 and channel 2 we saved earlier is displayed on the screen. So this reference allows us to store uh, signals and refer to them later. Um, while using reference, you have to know that once a uh, signal has been saved, you cannot change the change its voltage division or time per division. So, for proper measurement, when you save the signal, you should uh, remember the voltage per division and time per division, so that when you are comparing this save signal to a live signal, you uh, uh, you know if you are getting the correct measurements or not. So, if you save it uh, in two volt and 250 microsecond uh, divisions the live signals must be connected in the same setting so that you can make the proper uh, readings